you tell us about the friendship game and your character in the film? Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the friendship game is a, about a group of four friends who um, uh, one of them finds a uh, sort of an, an object, a mysterious looking object in a, in a yard sale. Um, and uh, it's supposedly called, a, it's, it's supposedly a friendship game, a game that you play with your friends and it tests your friendships. Uh, and so, yeah, these these four uh, characters, uh, I play one of them, Rob, Robbie, uh, and he uh, is sort of the only guy in, in the friend group, uh, but he gets along great with all his friends and uh, has kind of different relationships with all of them, I guess, but they really are this core unit of four. And um, the friendship game comes along at a time where they're already being tested because they might all be, not might, they all are going to go different places, uh, yeah. some of them different places for college. So it's kind of set in that that summer, that in-between summer between high school and college when, uh, you know, things are are almost kind of uh, coming to an end. That chapter of their life is coming to an end. And then, uh, well, some more uh, freaky stuff yeah. <laughs> emerges from the friendship game. You've brought so many dynamic characters to life on this screen. What was it about this particular script and Robbie that attracted you to the project? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was it was sort of the the opportunity to balance the two things, which was sort of these genuine human relationships, this these friendship relationships that are important to develop, um, uh, and the complications of those those you know friendships and things like that that were interesting to develop. Uh, and then also sort of the darker side of it and sort of being able to go on that journey. Obviously, we didn't shoot in chronological order, but through the shoot, going on that journey from sort of the light uh, into the darker stuff and the way that sort of everybody changes, their perceptions of each other change. Um, it seemed like there was a lot of um, stuff to do there as an actor. Uh, and the script was just cool. I mean, it was it was hard to pin down exactly what was going to happen next or where it was yeah. going. And it sort of shifted a little bit who it was following. And, and, and that I thought was really interesting. And yeah, so all those elements were sort of exciting to me. I enjoyed reading it, um, just reading it as a story. And then I was like, oh, there's actually some stuff to do here as an actor that's pretty exciting. You know, in addition to the work that you've done on screen, you're also a director and writer. How have your experiences behind the camera changed the way that you approach your work on screen and the way that you collaborate with directors like Scooter? Yeah, yeah. You know, it's it's I think it's been super helpful. I think I think when you when you've done directing yourself, even just a few shorts like I've done, but you really start to get a sense of that role and sort of all the different hats the director kind of has to juggle. And so um, I find for me as an actor, I mean, first of all, I'm just a lot more sort of camera aware and aware of kind of not just physically where it is, but what it's trying to achieve. I feel like when I was younger as an actor, especially before I really started to direct or look at that sides of things, you know, someone would tell you to move to the side and you think, oh, what does that even mean? Or, you know, <laughs> like everyone, you know, you feel a little bit like you're just being moved around. But if you have a sense of, oh, this is the close up, they're probably going over my shoulder. They're probably trying to like, you know, you sort of start to get a sense of that kind of stuff. Um, and I just think it makes me more comfortable on set, more aware of what's going on. Uh, which then makes it easier to forget, you know, because as an actor, you're trying to show up and forget about all that technical stuff when you're an actor, but you don't want that to get in the way of the technical things that are required, you know, to to make the movie good and actually capture your performance and your, you know, your co-stars performances. So that's one way. And then, yeah, it's 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 helpful, too, because sometimes you know, when talking about character and things like this, you know, it, it can be nice to kind of have that shorthand of working with actors as well and, yeah. and knowing that push and pull. So, so yeah, it's fun. I mean, it's interesting because, you know, I still try to kind of, again, it's still the director's movie. So I wouldn't say since directing, I'm doing too much of, uh, you know, uh, offering shot ideas or anything like that. Uh, but, but yeah, I think, it, I think it enhances my ability as, as an actor to kind of come onto set and be super aware of all the moving points. Be aware that, you know, it's important to get time to talk to Scooter about the scenes, but figuring out what I now have a little more sense of a rhythm of like, okay, they're blocking, they're setting up the shot. Mm -hmm. This is not the time. Let me wait. Let me figure it out. Let, you know, that, that kind of stuff when you've been the director yourself and you know what it's like to have every moment in your hand. Uh, yeah. I just, I, I'd like to think it just makes me a little easier to work with hopefully. And uh, yeah. 
Great answer. And like you were saying, at the center of this film are these four friendships that are tested. And there's such a fantastic chemistry that comes off the screen between you and the rest of the cast. How were you all able to build that uh, that bond and the relationships needed for for this performance? Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it it's it's cool because we just. I mean, I think the great thing was a lot of that will come naturally if all four people are excited to be there and excited to meet each mm. other and are passionate and everyone's kind of on the same level of I'm excited to be here I mean I'm excited to be doing it with these people and we had that totally 100% all three of us um all four of us me uh Kelsey Caitlin and and Peyton and we so you know we we met and got into shooting pretty quickly it's not like we had this long rehearsal process or anything but we we just we made the most of that early time and then we kind of just kept building on it every single day um so so yeah that was really fun and we all just became fast friends and still are friends to this day so I have a little you know group group chat thread that that will still um go off every now and then and and that's awesome so it's uh you know it's a genuine friendship bond that developed and I think I I think I can see that in some of the scenes when I see the movie too yeah yeah for sure that it's just you're just like okay there was you know we all were actually kind of happy and excited to and we're all doing the thing we love too right so that enhances everyone's mood and uh, but but on, on this one, it really was a genuine bond. So that was fun. Yeah, I've got a two-part question for you, but you've worked on projects of all sizes. The first question is, what is it about independent filmmaking that excites you as a creative? And you're also not, not a stranger to the horror genre as well. What is it about horror that excites you as a creative as well? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so independent film, I guess I'll start with that. That's, that's, uh, that's really fun to me. And I've always had such a great time on that. And I think, you know, when it's an indie and when it's a little bit smaller focus that way, you know, you just, you become closer with people. Like I'm saying, you know, you're often staying in the same type of hotel or you're staying in the same sort of area and you get to really bond and, 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 and kind of form, form that sort of acting troupe with your other actors, with the crew, uh, everybody kind of has to kind of jump in with both feet. And I've always found that that means that, you, you know, you just have deeper memories and, and kind of like what I was saying with the directing question, you know, when, sometimes on the bigger budget things, things are more spread out because everyone has their own trailer or has their own situation or all this different stuff. And it's so easy to sort of be in your own sort of lane. And I think on this stuff, it, you just wind up showing up with to set and it's very sort of, you're, you you really know everybody's name and know everybody you're connected to everything. And I, I always feel like that kind of um, both probably makes for a better movie, but but more than that just makes for a better experience. You know, it just makes more for more fun uh, being on set and it just feels like a deeper uh, bond and and I like that a lot and and as far as horror yeah I've been able to do a lot of stuff sort of in that realm and uh, I, I don't know I mean it's just it's so fun I you know horror is such a such a great genre and I, I think it's one where it's really like anything it's like comedy or 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 you know you know portraying romance on screen if you were to be a rom-com you know it's like any genre requires its own sort of set of kind of situations and rules. And mm -hmm. I think as an actor and as a creative person, you sort of, the more you do, the the hopefully the better you get it, or at the very least, the more familiar you get with it. And you sort of understand the demands of what it takes to sort of, you know, set up the human aspects and then go down the dark rabbit hole and sort of how to ground certain things and, and when to sort of, you know, you know, really go for it with scary sort of behavior and things. I, I you know, the, the thing about horror is, the concepts it, it it opens up for such unique and original concepts yeah but so often it is a similar setup at times when you've got sort of the combo and so you kind of are able to kind of remember those experiences and go back and and and, and hopefully sort of balance those two things because I feel like a lot of horror films are like that it's balancing the real human light side both the happy side often before things go crazy and then kind of uh, making that humanity extend through to the end so it's uh, uh, through what is hopefully going to be some some freaky, scary stuff. And just having been at film festivals or in theaters about with horrors, both as a fan and both with stuff that I've been in, there's really nothing like it when you're in a theater full of horror fans and people are really on the ride. It's uh, There's nothing like that. Yeah, this is a horror film that's really grounded in reality, like you were just saying, and the relationships and, and kind of human behavior. As an actor, how did you prepare? How did you create the space for yourself to dive into Robbie's art that we see unfold in the film? Yeah, I mean, it's really just um, 
honestly just grounding myself, you know, it's just making mm. sure I'm coming to set every day and I'm kind of plugged in to where I'm at and, and where I have to get to. And if it's a day I have to show up and um, be funny and be loose, then to allow myself to be funny and to be loose. And if it's a day where there's dark emotional stuff going on to sort of operate in a different key, not necessarily in character, but just a little more within myself, a little more ready uh, to sign and make sure that I can, I can get to that place when, when the cameras are rolling. So again, as an actor, it's, it's a tricky thing because, you know, there's a lot of other moving parts going on as well. So yeah. especially on emotional days, days where you have to get angry, days where you have to cry, things like that. Um, you know, you're also sort of trying to peak at a, at a specific moment. You know, you're almost like an athlete in that way, except you don't yeah. know exactly when the game's going to start. <laughs> so you really have to sort of uh, manage yourself and be aware of uh, of, of yourself and, and, and make sure that, you know, you're sort of on that balance because you don't want to show up and be super loose. And then they're like, okay, five minutes to roll. And you're like, oh no. But you also don't want to show up and be so kind of in it that you're tired. And by the time you actually start shooting, you know, that you're like, oh, I'm so sort of like, so it's it's a constant sort of balance um, with those things. And uh, yeah, it's fun to do. It's something, honestly, every day is different. That's what's fun about it. Where you are that day is going to dictate kind of where, uh, what you have to do to prepare. Definitely. I got one final question for you. You're such a dynamic storyteller. What's next for you? What's left on your bucket list? Uh, I mean, there's a lot left on my bucket list for sure. I mean, I definitely want to get into more writing and directing. Um, I actually I, I saying I have a short film delivery uh, up on my YouTube channel yeah. Uh, delivery. Yeah. Which is great. I like to direct people to that. And then, yeah, I've got a movie called the unheard another horror movie coming out next year, which I really, which I thought was great. I was really excited about that too. And yeah, man, just doing a lot of writing and, and kind of auditioning for, for the next thing. And I uh, got some exciting stuff, hopefully in the works, you know, it's sort of uh, if I'm not uh, acting in something or, or, uh, or auditioning for something, I, uh, I will usually be writing too. So, you know, just kind of, kind of keeping the creative brain uh, firing. Mm -hmm.